Welcome back to Rand on Real Estate on 77 WABC. I'm Greg Rand, your host. The website is gregrand.com. I'm sitting here with Paul Adler, real estate genius and guru and creative reuse specialist. And we just got finished talking about what has uh, been named the Hudson River Stage, uh, formerly a defunct factory, environmental disaster area, now functioning film studio, and uh, almost a fully cleaned property. And I asked Paul to stick around because I'm going to change subjects right now. Um, before I do, go to the website, greggrand.com, if you want to see pictures of the Hudson River stage and some of the shots that we have of some of the films that were made there. Really, really interesting real estate reuse story. Um, and there are lessons for everybody at all levels of real estate investment in that story. But now I want to jump over. Paul, did you catch 60 Minutes on Sunday? I did. You did. Okay, so you saw the story about the deadbeat, the kid in, uh, what was it, Arizona? Was it Arizona or was it Nevada? I think it was Arizona. What's the difference? What's the difference? Um, kid in Arizona who um, was walking away from his mortgage. We talked about this last week, and we didn't address the moral issue. But right now where it's coming from, where it's getting to out there in the world, is that um, the banks are a bunch of immoral SOBs, and they default on loans frequently. And corporate America, who are you know, dysfunctional, evil empire SOBs, they're defaulting on loans. So you, as an individual homeowner, you can too, and almost to say you should. Because um, it's for some reason it's not immoral for you to do it. It is, however, immoral for them to do it. A, a crazy double standard, and I was—I shouldn't say shocked, but I was distressed at the way that 60 Minutes handled it. So let's play a clip. Let's play clip one, and this is uh, the the main part of the story. Despite some indications that the economy is recovering, the housing market remains a disaster area. In the past year, it's estimated that at least a million Americans who can afford to stay in their homes simply walked away. But the Deaners, who stopped paying their mortgage five months ago, plan to stay in their house for free until the bank forecloses in July. My family raised me to believe that you should take care of your contract liabilities and your debt. Um, that's how I was brought up to, to be. Live within your means. Live within your means, yeah. And that's what I've done. So you don't feel any responsibility for it? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, I don't. So I, I was raised to live within my means and pay my contractual obligations, and that's what I've done. But I'm also walking away from my mortgage, and um, I think we got it in there, but if you didn't hear it, the uh, the statement was also made that he hasn't paid his mortgage for five months, and he's not going to pay it until they absolutely evict him from the property sometime later on the summer. Now, there are so many things wrong with this, not the least of which is what's up with more, is that morally safer? What is he got, got a, took a big bite of a taco right before they went on air? What's with that guy? M morally safer is a saint in my book. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul, Paul, <laughs> I had Paul stick around because he's a committed lefty, and, and I just really wanted to hear how he explained how his side is butchering this, this crisis and making it so much worse. Um, morally safer made it very permissive almost mocking the idea that there's anything wrong with walking away. Again, because the, you know, the, the corporations do it. Of course, they're immoral, but you should do it because it wouldn't be immoral of you to do it. I'm not trying to be on a high horse here, but when you hear somebody say, I was raised the right way, I was raised to stand by my obligations, I was raised to live within my means, and I've done all those things, except for the fact that now I'm walking away, jamming out my bank, i got the help of a great lawyer who's got a website call. I'm not going to tell you the website because I don't want to send anybody there because their advice is so bad. This kid, this punk, doesn't even have the fortitude to recognize that he could just wait, just wait eight years or ten years. Is that so horrible? The value in the property will be back. They, they say in the story that he works at the university, which is not a shock. He's inside the academic bubble, and he's in there, and I don't know what he's teaching kids, but that, that statement, I mean, Paul, what do you think about that? I mean, it, well, well, Greg, you, you confused conservative. The, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, the, the banks and, and Wall Street have set a horrible example for what's going on. Uh, you can't let them slide on what they've done. They've done wrong. They've set, a, they've set a, a terrible example for the country. The fact that this kid wants to walk away and do what he's doing, he's a dirtbag himself. But make no mistake about it, the entire structure is broken, and it's broken based on greed, and uh, I don't know how any other way you could create a lack of responsibility. You know, I mean, both. It's, it's just a testament to where the country is going and everything that's wrong with where we're going. You know, I mean, you think about who, who are those girls in, in Southern California, the uh, the Kardashians. What are they famous for again? I, I, I don't I don't know, but I'm looking at their website now. Um, <laughs> yeah, what are they famous for? I think it's for being bimbos. 
You know, usually it's okay, at least if you start as a singer or an actress, you know, we, you, you can get some credit for that. But it's just going in a bad direction. And when you see a credible media outlet like that smirk at the idea that there's anything wrong at all with walking away from a mortgage, I don't know that 60 Minutes smirked at that, Greg. I think that 60 Minutes, probably the expose, the fact that it showed what was going on, was just another aspect of showing what, what in fact, has been broken here. And uh, this is not something you can lay on one side of the aisle or the other. Yeah, this kid's a dirtbag, and the bankers and the people at Wall Street and some of these other people who have set the example are also dirtbags. Yeah, I, never, I never knew a liberal to recognize media bias on their side when they see it staring them in the face. So I'll give you a pass on that one. The source of this attitude... Um, comes right from Washington. Let's, let's play clip number two, and, and let's see how our national leaders have encouraged this kind of attitude. The plan I'm announcing focuses on rescuing families who played by the rules and acted responsibly. It will not help dishonest lenders who acted irresponsibly, distorting the facts. What did he say that was wrong? Distorting the facts and dismissing the fine print of the expensive buyers who didn't know better. There must be a provision in this budget take care of struggling middle class a powerful voice. so they can stay in their homes. And in addition to that, we have found that some people owe more on their mortgages than the house is worth. This is something the budget must take into consideration. This is something the budget must take into consideration. So right out of the gate, these are clips from over a year ago, okay? So President Obama trying to help a whole host of politicians racing for the microphone to say, if you're late on your mortgage, you need a bailout, you need help, you're a victim, the banks were evil, you have no responsibility. The kid in Arizona obviously got the message that he has no responsibility. But what gets me is the fact that, once again, they have no conception of what the impact of those kinds of statements might be. For example, when they first came out and started yelling about, well, if you can't pay your mortgage, you know, I love it. You have the smartest people, apparently, smartest people in the country, get together in Washington, you know, they... They leave Harvard and Yale, they get down to Washington, and they get together and they say, we have people here who can't pay their mortgage. What should we do? And after a couple of days of thinking about it, they say, let's lower the mortgage payment. Brilliant. Genius idea. The second thing they do is, well, how do we know if they can't pay their mortgage? Well, if they're not paying it, they must not be able to pay it. And so they get out there and start making statements about if you were... If you can't pay your mortgage, you must be a victim. If you're a victim, you must get a handout from the government. And then they're shocked shocked when mortgage defaults triple 90 days later. It's like the classic thing. They never, they never see that when you say, Here, here's a hungry person, give him a fish, they never anticipate that the line's going to form for, for, for fish. Now, what's that about? What's it about? It's about the last uh, eight to ten years of uh, uh, unregulated markets where uh, Wall Street was able to create fictionary products that uh, created a false bubble and uh, put people at risk. Let's face it. You can't talk about this problem today without the fact that Wall Street admittedly now has made huge mistakes because they were unregulated by a by a president who said, go ahead, knock yourselves out. All right, I'm glad we cleared it up. we got to wrap up, and I'm glad we cleared it up that it's all George Bush's fault. Thank you very much, Paul Hadler, for being here. Rand on Real Estate 77 WABC. 77 WABC.